In 1957, San Francisco publicist Frank Werber went down to nearby Menlo Park to catch a singing group he'd heard about. At a place called The Cracked Pot, he found Dave Gard, Nick Reynolds, and Bob Shane singing folk and calypso songs to a very hip, very attentive crowd. Before night's end, a contract had been signed by all four, making Frank their personal manager. With Frank as manager, Boyle Gilmore as record producer, and David Buckwheat as bassist arranger, the Kingston Trio was poised to make things happen. Frank Werber was definitely responsible for making us work in the beginning and really work at rehearsing our stuff. And Buckwheat was an excellent bass player, jazz bass player, but, uh, and uh, um, road managers were good and uh, managers were good and Boyle Gilmore was the most creative individual I think I'd ever met with being low key too. He uh, initiated, he was the first person to use the, uh, the capital uh, echo chambers, especially on groups. He was a very innovative uh, producer. It took four days to record their first mono-only album, and it had a limited pressing of about 1,000. Contained in that first LP was a post-Civil War murder ballad from North Carolina called Tom Dooley. Disc jockeys at KULB in Salt Lake City began playing the song off the album and getting enormous phone reaction. Soon, other stations around the country were playing it, and it became a certified turntable hit, meaning it was often requested, but record buyers couldn't find it in stores. Three months after the LP's release, Capitol issued a single, and very soon after, it shot to number one. The song launched the Kingston Trio and started an entire folk music boom. The group also developed a loyal collegiate following with an innovative approach. We were the first ones to do college country uh, at a large scale. In uh, the first four years, from 1958 to 1962, uh, both with, uh, immediately with, with Dave to start with and then the first year with John, we played 475 colleges and nightclubs and fairs and stuff. In the first four years, we were on the average uh, on the road uh, 280 to 290 days a year. We had our own plane. We are flying into grass airfields and gravel airfields and stuff, playing small colleges all over the country. In 1961, Dave Gard quit to form a Weavers type group called the Whiskey Hill Singers. He took with him David Wheat, leaving only 50% of the original four players. A 21-year-old San Diego singer-songwriter named John Stewart replaced Guard, and Dean Riley became the new bassist. The group's personnel stayed unchanged for the next six years, producing many more gold albums and hit singles. The Kingston Trio ushered in the protest song movement with Pete Seeger's Where Have All the Flowers Gone? We were playing in a, a club in Boston at a, a concert hall, and the guy that uh, promoted the concert, George Ween, also owned a club in downtown Boston. He said there's a group coming up from New York that, uh, um, that he had playing at his place downtown and that they had asked if I could bring you guys over and you could see what they want. They don't have a, a record contract or a or business contract with anybody or anything. And they're just the first time out of New York. And so uh, uh, we went down to see the group and it turned out to be Peter, Paul and Mary. And uh, we invited them over and we immediately sent Peter and Paul out for ribs. <laughs> I'm not sure that was true but it sounds realistic. <laughs> But uh, we, we got uh, Where Have All the Flowers Gone, Mary gave us, and, uh, and we gave uh, them Lemon Tree. Early in 1964, popular music was about to change dramatically. And after seven years and 22 albums for the Kingston Trio, it became contract renewal time with Capitol. Well, they dropped us for the Beatles. That was our fault. We played in England in 62, and the Beatles opened a show for us at Royal Festival Hall. We came back and told the people at Capitol about this great group we heard in England, and not realizing the Capitol was owned by EMI, an English corporation. <laughs> and came time for our contract to be renewed, and bang! And we accounted for 14% of the entire sales of Capitol Records at the time, so they were taking a chance and you knew it. But they did the right thing, they dropped our contract for the Beatles. After 43 years, Bob Shane continues to tour with two partners, still racking up about 200 dates per year. George Grove auditioned in the group and he's an excellent musician and he's been with me for 24, 25 years now. And then when Nick just recently retired, uh, Bobby Hayworth came back and uh, we're just doing gangbuster shows and having a great time and entertaining people, which is what the whole basis of the Kingston Trio is.